Hey everybody, welcome to the ECG of the day. My name is Reed, and before we get started, feel free to head down into the description of this video to download this PDF so you can follow along and make your own notes and save it for later. Um, and also feel free, um, if you'd like to support the channel, to like, comment, and subscribe um, so that we can keep putting out some ECGs for you guys. So let's get started. So the first thing I like to do with the ECG is to look at the forest and the trees. The forest are my QRS complexes. I maybe choose lead two here and I see I've got a narrow complex rhythm. See I've got a narrow complex rhythm. It seems to be regular and then you see it kind of has these moments. It starts to slow down and then it really starts to slow down. So maybe a pause of some sort will evaluate for and then it kind of speeds back up again as we kind of continue throughout this rhythm. So I have a feeling just based on just my eyeballing of this rhythm that we're going to have to really look into the details of why there are some changes in the R to R intervals in between the QRSs. And so, you know, I see if I look here, there are some P waves. So I do know that this is some type of rhythm that is driven by the atria in the setting of a narrow QRS complex, but um, we'll see. Let's evaluate for that atrial activity. And so this is gonna be one where we're gonna really have to look at the P waves throughout and make sure that we kind of understand what's going on. And so I see that we've got these P waves that we noted. I see I've got like a P that goes to this QRS. I can see a little P right here. That P goes to this QRS. This one seems to go. So we've got P's in front of our QRSs. There's a P right there that goes to the QRS. I do notice, however, that some of these P waves don't have the same morphology, right? Especially this P wave has a different morphology from these P waves. And then we've got this negative P wave here. So we've got a couple of P waves that seem to maybe be not our sinus P waves. Which ones are the sinus P waves? Well, normally the sinus P waves are the ones that occur at some type of regular interval and um, I have kind of the same morphology over and over. I feel like these P waves here are our sinus P waves. And if you look, those P waves are upright in lead one. And in AVF, it's hard to say, but maybe this one is a sinus P wave. I would say that one likely is. If you look at it here, it looks like the same morphology as the ones that we already identified. And so I would say that there is some type of sinus rhythm that is going through this. But there's also ectopic P waves. And I would say the ectopic P waves are probably there. It looks like there. And then if we scan through this rhythm, we might have some more. And so we'll kind of you know, dial in a little closer to that. And the reason why we know these are ectopic is because the P wave morphology is different. It tells me that the P wave is being conducted from a different location within the myocardium of the atria. And so the next thing we'll do is we'll look at intervals, and we like to look at our PR interval first to evaluate how's our AV node doing. And if you look, notice here, this P wave kind of starts on a solid line, and the QRS starts a little bit after the solid line. So we have a PR interval that is greater than 200 milliseconds. So it seems like there is some type of AV block. And we know that first degree AV blocks are when every P wave conducts to Every QRS, second degree is when some, and third degree is when none. So we need to figure out, you know, is this um, PR interval the same for all the beats? And so um, it seems like generally they are. You know, it looks like the PR interval actually gets shorter on this one. And so interestingly enough, if we kind of look at maybe why this is the same beat, that, that PR interval looks a little bit shorter, and that's one of our ectopic P waves. So one of those ectopic beats, that was a negative deflection in AVF. So that's telling me if it's a negative P wave in AVF, that that ectopic rhythm is from somewhere low within the atria, and it depolarizes upward away from AVF to create a negative P wave. And so it's, it's so close to this AV node that sometimes they can actually conduct down with a little bit of a uh, more uh, of a PR interval that's shorter. So I would say... Uh, that's probably why that's the case. Generally, we have PR intervals that stay somewhat consistent. There's there's a PR interval here. If you look at this PR interval, this is a shorter PR interval. So what do you think is going on here? Well, 
I'm going to figure out well, what is the AV node doing? What is my H tree doing together? And so you notice that we've got our the rhythm before. Let's look at what happened before. We've got this P wave that conducts to a QRS, our ectopic P wave. And then it looks like there's a bit of a pause. So we need to figure out what's that pause from. And if you look closely at the end of the T wave, you can see this little deflection there that doesn't occur in the previous beat. Doesn't occur in the previous beat. And that is a premature atrial contraction. It's premature atrial contraction because there is, it's a P wave. And so, and it comes early. That is um, a PAC that occurs so early that it's non-conducted, meaning that the AV node was still refractory when it was conducting. And so this is a blocked premature atrial contraction. So because of that, we get this compensatory pause. So we're waiting, waiting, waiting for another one to come. You'll notice that we get another P wave that comes. See that P wave comes, but it has a really short PR interval, a PR interval that is too short because we know that this person's PR interval is normally a little bit greater than 200 milliseconds, probably 240 milliseconds. And this person has a what looks to be a first degree AV block because every P wave that's conducting to the QRS is occurring with a long PR interval. You can see it here, you can see it here, you can see it there. And so when, when we see the pure interval getting really short, my thought is that this P wave occurs right before a junctional, this is a junctional escape beat. Let me write that again, escape. And I know it's a junctional escape because like I said, it's a narrow complex QRS, so it's likely occurring somewhere within the AV junction and conducting to the ventricles in a similar fashion as the normal QRS. And that junctional escape occurred because of that interval being so long that the junction says, oh, you know, I need to beat so that my ventricles can perfuse my body. And it occurs just in the time where this person's uh, SA node fired off another beat. And so that P wave is not conducting to that QRS. That QRS is being generated by the AV junction. And then you'll notice as things are kind of recovering, we get another sinus beat here that conducts with a little bit of a longer PR interval because our AV node has something called decremental conduction. And so for the next couple of beats, here's another P wave. For the next couple of beats, that AV node is just a little bit longer. That PR interval is a little bit longer until we get to our normal conduction at the end. So that's that was a bit of a crazy sequence there. Let's go over it again. So we've got our P wave that conducts to the QRS. We've got an ectopic P wave that conducts to a QRS. Then we have P to the QRS, normal P to the QRS. Then we have another ectopic P wave that conducts to a QRS. We've got a blocked PAC that occurs right there with a pause. And as that pause occurs, we have a junctional escape that occurs almost at the same time as the next P wave. And so that P wave we know doesn't conduct all the way to the ventricles because of the junctional escape. Then we have a little bit of prolonged PR interval here as the AV nodes are recovering because of decremental conduction. And then we get back here to the normal AV nodal function. So this person, as you can tell, Anytime it doesn't conduct a beat, it's because of a premature beat, not because of a normal uh, P wave that just wasn't conducted. And so we can say with pretty good confidence that this person has a first degree AV block. The AV node is just a little bit diseased. And because of that, some of the PR intervals are changing because of decremental conduction. All right, let's evaluate our QRS complex. Our QRS is upright in lead one. It is also upright in AVF. It tells me that my QRS uh, axis is down to the left, which is normal. You can see I've got a little bit of what we would say like an R prime in V1, but it's still narrow, so maybe an incomplete right bundle branch block. So maybe an incomplete right bundle branch block. You can see like even incomplete slurring of our lateral S waves. Sometimes that can kind of hint to you that there's a little bit of an incomplete right bundle branch block. What that means is just there are 
there's a little bit of delayed conduction through the right ventricle. And so we're getting some delayed positive signals in V1 because V1 captures the right ventricle, right? If you look at this diagram of my transverse precordial leads, V1 that is sitting right here is capturing some late forces heading towards the right ventricle if that bundle branch is just a little bit diseased. And so we get maybe an incomplete right bundle branch block. And uh, but the last thing we're going to do is look for our pathological Q waves and ST and T wave changes throughout. And luckily, we don't see um, any here that are concerning in any anatomical pattern. And so let's just put this together. This was a bit of a messy ECG. Um, but what do we have? We've got what appears to be some sinus uh, P waves that are intermixed with ectopic atrial activity. Some of them that occur premature and are blocked. So we have blocked PACs with a junctional escape. So I hope this helps. Um, this was, like I said, messy, but it's really helpful to really kind of tease out where is the lesion in the heart, right? If this person is going to, if their disease progresses, we need to understand what part of the cardiac conduction system is going to continue to progress in a downward fashion, right? In this case, there's some, there's some atrial ectopy, there's some AV nodal conduction delay, and so we're going to look out for that and maybe bring this person up for maybe some causes. So that was a fun ECG. If you have any comments or questions, um, please send them my way. Think about subscribing to the channel, and we'll see you tomorrow. Take care.